I bring you the very warm greetings of His Excellency President Mohammed Buhari, who uh, keeps asking me how far we have gone with the reform process. Uh, to which I've always responded, I've always responded, it is ongoing. I think he has now realized that ongoing doesn't mean very much, and uh, that uh, we have to actually have some specifics. Health reform has always been a front burner issue for uh, many administrations before us, and we heard from the very comprehensive um, presentation by Dr. Azudo and also from the consultation paper. That well, is almost cyclical. There have been several health reform initiatives. And this administration also has taken this uh, as a rather serious uh, matter that ought to be addressed fully. And the reasons are quite obvious. Uh, public health indices have, over the years, been poor. Existing facilities, hardly cope with the current population. The population continues to grow at between 2.4 to 2.5 percent annually, making it difficult for existing facilities to cope. We are told that uh, by the experts that we have a hybrid disease pattern with high occurrence of both communicable and non-communicable disease. Most medical expenses are paid out of pocket uh, and, of course, we're told that our pocket expenditure index is about 70. The result is that illness is not merely uh, a physical or a physically de debilitating event. It can also cause financial ruin. Our systems, both at federal, state, and public hospitals, have generally been adjusted, inefficient, and burdensome. And it's estimated that we require between four billion per annum, uh, that's US dollars, to about 4.5 billion to be able to achieve universal health coverage. But with our annual population growth rate, uh, that figure can only go higher. It's also evident that we cannot budget alone or by compulsory spend fund health care. And that, I think, has been shown to us, uh, even from the presentations today, that that is well nigh impossible. There's also the problem of inadequate medical and paramedical personnel, an issue which becomes even more noticeable as you move from uh, the urban to the rural areas. Some of the suggestions we've heard already suggest ways of trying to make up for, for these numbers, so this patient number. And in recent months, doctor to patient ratios have fallen even more precipitous. It's on account of uh, brain drain. Previous attempts have been made to improve our healthcare system, and we've heard quite a few of that already. But implementation, as we've heard also, has been incomplete, uh, non systemic, sometimes haphazard. And in fact, sometimes the records of previous attempts have been very kept. So you find that even in trying to uh, in trying to build on previous reform, that the problem acquiring information on previous attempts is a very difficult one, which should not be the case ordinarily. I mean, I think Dr. Azundo suggested something she described as institutionalization. But I think that, and that is correct, I think that um, just as a matter of policy, every reform effort ought to be well documented and ought to be made available across uh, the, or across uh, the self, across the public service, and even made available uh, uh, on uh, public websites and um, other public portals. So I think that this particular effort is one that we are going to keep the public very well informed of, and we're going to keep it on public portals as well. So I think anybody who wants to understand ongoing research doesn't have to go looking in the Ministry of Health, uh, the Federal Ministry of Health or elsewhere. It ought to be available publicly so that 
doing research, or those who are just interested can not only know things, but participate in the process. An important point to bear in mind is the fact that uh, a national health reform initiative is not the same as a federal government health reform initiative. And I think this point has been very made uh, today. The states, according to our constitution, have responsibility for primary and secondary health care and can participate in tertiary health care as well. So any reform without the full participation of the states, of course, will fall short of a national health reform effort. So this is why uh, it's so important that the states are involved at every stage. And we'll I'll talk very briefly about that in a moment. So this generally was a state of play in the health sector when uh, on September 6, 2021, the president inaugurated the Presidential Health Reform Committee. And I was given the privilege of chairing the committee of 29 very distinguished members. The committee was to be guided by the following terms of reference. The first development of a health sector reform program for Nigeria in close collaboration with the governments, with the FCT administration, and taking into cognizance the di diagnostic report developed by Vesta Healthcare Partners, the review reports of the Federal Ministry of Health, and uh, the advisory committee and other health reform proposals that may have been submitted or may be submitted to the committee. So there's a wide range of consultative papers and reform efforts that we're supposed to look at. Second is the review of all health reforms adopted in the past two decades and factoring in the lessons learned in the development of the new health sector reform program. The third, is to chart out a health system that best meets the needs of Nigerians in the 21st century, with special emphasis on strengthening primary health care, improving access to health insurance, and establishing a platform that enables the country to better respond to future pandemic. The fourth is to make any other recommendation to the government as may be considered appropriate towards improving health care to live in Nigeria. I think the mandate writ large is to address the question of universal health coverage. And this remains the key objective of the reform process, universal health coverage. And frankly, I think that um, reform is always, I mean, especially fundamental reform of any system, is always different from several changes that are made uh, in that system. There must be an overarching objective. There must be a vision. You know, there must be some clarity as to where, what we expect to see in any particular reform. The healthcare reform. There must be a vision. There must be some clarity as to what we expect to see overall. And I'm not talking of the individual components. I mean, there are so many important things that are done. Health insurance is one. Even just setting up an essential drugs list. All sorts of things are important. But the overarching objective of a reform must be clear. Where is the reform headed? In the United Kingdom, for instance, they have a national, they have a national health uh, service, an NHIS service. Now, the NHIS is the ultimate objective of their reform. In the US, they don't have a similar system, but they try to do something with the Affordable Care Act to bring in as many people as possible into uh, the healthcare system, at least to be able to benefit from some kind of free healthcare system. I think ultimately, what most societies hope to do is provide their people with either free or affordable and uh, good healthcare. So there must be something that we're, uh, that we're looking at. Of course, you know, the critical objectives are complementary subject matter of the reform. Uh, in this particular case, health insurance, primary health care, and pandemic preparedness are very, very important. We must keep in mind what the ultimate objective is. However, it's worthwhile to note that government, the first government of Nigeria, has made some significant efforts to lay some important building blocks for reform, even in the course of the life of this administration. 
In 2018, the president signed the bill establishing the Nigeria Center for Disease Control, the NCDC, which enabled the agency to respond to the challenges uh, of public health emergencies and enhance Nigeria's preparedness to respond to uh, the last the COVID-19 uh, pandemic in particular, and several other you know, outbreaks of disease that we have seen in our country. May 24th this year, the president signed into law the National Health Insurance Authority Act 2022. This new act is an important milestone for health finance in Nigeria. And I think that this is fundamental to whatever reform that we plan to do. Health financing is fundamental, which is why I think the uh, NHI Act, Act is a fundamental one because it addresses the chief concern around universal health uh, coverage. I think that it will mitigate the current difficulties of out-of-pocket expenses. To create a virtual cycle, it means that more money will be available for medical personnel and for hospital facilities and resources. Ultimately, health insurance will accelerate our journey to universal health coverage through health insurance for all categories of Nigerians by a mandatory mechanism in collaboration with state health insurance agencies. I understand that uh, the National Health Insurance Summit is being planned to continue the process of ensuring full implementation of the, of the Act. In March of this year, the Primary Health Care uh, Summit took place. This was organized by the Federal Ministry of Health and the National Primary Health Care Development Agency towards reimagining uh, the, health, uh, the primary health care system in Nigeria. And a case was made there, a very important one, for private uh, partnerships or private uh, sector partnerships to complement the uh, ongoing improvements in primary health care infrastructure and to also uh, support they are uh, making more available health commodities uh, and also, of course, to support the health workforce. And I think that the primary health care uh, component of this reform is also a very important one. And just before uh, we came in here, I was having a short discussion with the Honorable Minister of Health as to why we need to do something in, uh, very critical about our primary health uh, reform. And the truth is that for a population this size, we really cannot ignore uh, primary health reform. We must find a way, you know, primary health care, we must find a way of strengthening that. And of course, there are so many suggestions, and I'm sure so much will also be said today. At the sub-national level, uh, we've also seen uh, a lot of the work that the governors have been doing. And we must commend uh, the recent launching of the Primary Healthcare Leadership Challenge Fund, which was launched by the governors, the 36 governors. And it's a commitment by the governors to elevate primary health care higher on their agendas. All of these events and other points of progress, uh, we hope will coalesce into one central program, which is the objective of, the prime, of this uh, particular, uh, particular reform effort. In the past few months, the Secretariat of the Committee has been working in conjunction with our various partners to develop a consultation paper. We've seen that paper, we've heard uh, the paper, and I hope all of us have copies of it. Uh, it's expected, of course, to guide and focus uh, our discussion. And this committee includes experts from the Ministry of Health, from uh, VESTA, uh, consultants, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, WHO, the World Bank, the FCDO, the IFC, Global Fund, uh, the AFNET, uh, DPRC, which is the research arm of the uh, NIPS, and we also have uh, uh, consultants from PricewaterhouseCoopers. A team, you know, a, a, a very wide ranging specialists as well. The overarching principle of this process has been inclusivity, inclusivity, and I think this point has been made repeatedly today, and this is reflected in the membership of the committee, which includes representation from the states, professional health care bodies, 
private sector, distinguished medical academicians, etc. And you also notice that we also approve the co-option of additional MDAs and also sub-national representation uh, facilitated by the Nigeria Governors Forum and the Commissioners of Health Forum. NGOs as well as individuals with experience in the business of, uh, of healthcare. Indeed, if there is anything we learned uh, from the COVID-19 pandemic and especially its aftermath, is that healthcare, especially public health emergencies, cannot but have a multidisciplinary and multi-sector approach. In the result, serious health reform must have the same uh, multi-sectoral approach, which is why we have Ministry of Agriculture, Ministry of Environment, very well represented today in all of our deliberations, and of course, we're very actively involved in the process, as well as several other ministries. I must particularly commend state governors who, through the National Economic Council and the Governors Forum, have worked together with the federal government on healthcare and uh, healthcare reform. Every month uh, at our meetings, the National Economic Council meetings, uh, we have a presentation on public health, uh, either on COVID, some of the public health challenges and issues. And we've also had, we also have a department that devoted to capital development, education and healthcare in particular. So they've been very much a part of the, uh, of, of the advocacy for national health reform and very much a part of that, um, of the movement towards national health reform. I think bearing in mind the difficulties, and this has been pointed out very eloquently, the difficulties of a national health where you have uh, states components as well as the federal government. I think we've done very well in the state governments have done uh, very well indeed. I have no doubt that we have the right caliber of people on this committee and who will be working through this reform process to address the myriad challenges of the health sector. I believe that everyone has received uh, most of the material, including, I hope, uh, the recommendations and the memoranda that have been submitted, or at least the summaries of the memoranda that have been submitted. And I hope that uh, we will read this documentation. It's a lot of documentation. I know that uh, many people would rather uh, listen to some of the comments, but I hope that you read them just so that our contributions at this, um, at this level will be as informed as possible. This retreat will be the first opportunity for the committee to meet in person especially for deep dives within the uh, thematic areas and the subcommittees. And I expect that uh, within the next two days, at the very least, we will at least define a future a trajectory for the future of the proposed recommendations for reform. I hope the draft document will be ready by January, end of January. I hope we'll be able to have a draft uh, document ready. But the important thing, is death. The important thing is how much work we're able to put all of this. And I hope that because we have a lot of, there's a lot of groundwork that we've done through the past few months, um, we'll at least be able to focus on the issues that have been highlighted. And I uh, must say that uh, reforms can be very complex indeed. I've been involved in quite a few, as I'm sure uh, some here have been. And the lesson learned are that there are no silver bullets and no perfect approaches to reforms. And this is especially true in huge areas like healthcare reform. As, uh, as, as we've seen, uh, previous efforts uh, already uh, are, have shown us that you simply cannot have a silver bullet. But we must take into account all the previous efforts. These are some of the lessons we've learned, that previous efforts must be built on. You may have several small, and you may also have several small and local reforms going on at different times. And even while this, you cannot stop a state from doing something about its healthcare system. So it's a very dynamic process, and there are many moving parts. 
and we've got to bear that in mind so that when we adopt a flexible approach that is able to take all of this into account. All we are required to do, in my own opinion, is to at least ensure that we set broad parameters and a vision which will enable us to track and incorporate other reform initiatives. And we, we must ensure that we have the right people around the table, which I'm sure that we already have, um, given the, uh, those who are here today. And that there is wide-ranging consultation, and that all views are properly considered, and that we keep our vision very clear through the process, and we develop a robust and viable uh, implementation process. So let me, as I close, mention for commendation in particular, our development partners. Uh, I want to thank them very much for the commitment of their time and resources. It's obvious that you saw the importance of this, pro uh, of this particular effort, and they've supported us to the fullest by actively participating in the series of activities which have led to uh, this particular day. And uh, they've supported financially and morally in every possible way. I must also commend all the members of the Presidential Health Reform Committee and our Secretary for answering the call to service for their hard work also, their dedication and commitment to this process. So while thanking you all for making the time for this, I hope that our deliberations today and uh, tomorrow will yield sorts of results that will benefit all of our people. Thank you very much.